Hi everyone. Welcome to Philosophy 1250 Critical Thinking. I'm Dr. Robert Fudge and I'll be your instructor for this semester. Critical thinking is a branch of logic which itself is a branch of philosophy. Now one thing that you should note is that while this is a philosophy course, it's not going to cover traditional philosophical questions like whether God exists or what the nature of morality is or whether we have free will or things like that. Rather, critical thinking is a skills course. We're going to be looking at arguments and explanations in ordinary language and learning how to identify, represent, and ultimately, and most importantly, how to evaluate them. So let's go ahead and take a look at the syllabus so we can see some of the main portions of the course. You'll note that the syllabus that I have up here is for spring 2018. I'm afraid that I had a, a bit of a family emergency over the break in Colorado, so I'm a little bit behind in putting things together. When you log into Canvas now, you'll see the updated spring 2019 materials. I'm just warning you that the dates and so on that you're going to see here aren't going to be entirely accurate, but the material nevertheless is. So first of all, you'll notice that this says my office is in 224 Swenson Gym. Well, that's not true anymore. Uh, my office is now room 140 in the newly renovated Lindquist Hall. My office hours are going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 10.30 until 11.20 and by appointment. So if my office hours are not um, convenient for you, please do make sure to uh, set up an appointment at another time. So long as I'm available, I'll be happy to meet with you. My phone number is extension 7046. And if you want to contact me using email, I would ask that you please use Canvas's communication stream. You can do that, uh, where is it? Let's see, I'm not seeing it here because, oh, there it is. Uh, you click on inbox and you can contact me that way. Okay, um, I think announcements, technical assistance, you can read through on your own. Let's talk about the textbook for this class. So the textbook is one that I wrote entitled The Art and Science of Critical Thinking. It's available online through the University Bookstore's digital textbook system, Redshelf. I've provided a link for where you can purchase it. Please note that all proceeds from the sale of the text are channeled directly to the university to enhance educational programs. I don't profit from the sale of the book at all. Now if you've been to the bookstore, you might have seen that there is no, they say that there is no required text for the course. The reason for that is that I want to give you the opportunity to decide whether you want to stay in the class before you purchase the text. Because this is an e-text, it cannot be returned. So, let's scroll down a little bit on the syllabus, down to the assignments list. And you'll see down here that I've provided links to all of the sections of the first chapter um, as well as links to the accompanying video lectures. So you will have a couple weeks to decide whether you want to stay in the class before you purchase the textbook. Now the uh, links that I have down there are to PDF versions of the text, so they're not as fully functional as the Red Shelf version. Let's go ahead and take a look for a moment at the Red Shelf um, version of the text. Sorry, log me out because I hadn't been in for a while. Here we go. So I'm going to go to the textbook. Okay. All right, so this is what um, the textbook looks like on Red Shelf. I'm going to put it in full screen mode so we can see it a little better. And I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit. OK, so over here on the upper left hand corner, we have a little drop down menu. And you'll see that Red Shelf includes uh, with it certain bookmarks that you can insert into your book, and uh, you can put your own uh, notes in it. Uh, if you have a, a tablet that uh, allows you to use a pen, you can use the pen on the tablet, and you can write notes in the book that way. You can create your own flashcards and study guides and so on. Okay. I'm going to click on the table of contents, and I'm going to go to the first chapter. I'm going to close the table of contents for now. And now I'm going to start scrolling through the book using these two arrows up here. So I'm going to scroll forward into section 1.1. Now you'll notice at the beginning of every section, there's a little box that will uh, have a link to a lecture video. 
Red Shelf is um, inserting those links now. I'm hoping that they are available for the beginning of the semester. If not, you can also link to the videos um, in the assignments list through Canvas. Uh, but in any case, once it's available, you'll be able to click here and it'll launch um, a video, a lecture video on YouTube. Okay. Then we can scroll through the section and you'll find at the end of the section will be uh, an exercise set. Okay, so that's what the textbook looks like. Let's go back to the Canvas course. Uh, the course description, uh, this is an introduction to informal logic, focusing on issues of logical form, standards of good and bad reasoning, and argumentative writing. In particular, we're going to look at arguments and explanations, as I said earlier. You can read the course objectives on your own. Let's talk about the requirements. So each assignment is going to have associated with it at least one textbook section to read, and most of these will include an embedded, embedded accompanying lecture. So you'll read the section of the course, I'm sorry, the section of the text, and then you'll watch a lecture. Once you've done that, uh, and you're feeling comfortable with the material, you can take an assessment quiz. You'll be required to complete a short five-question assessment quiz for each of the main reading sections for a total of 19 quizzes worth five points each. Those will be administered over Canvas. They're open note and open book and can be taken from any computer location. And in fact, you're even welcome uh, to take the quizzes with friends of yours who are in the class. Each one is worth approximately 1% of your final grade, so they can't be made up. However, I will drop your lowest score. That's how we get 90 points. Of the 19 quizzes, 18 will count, worth 5 points each. That's 90. Next, there's also a signature assignment uh, that you will be required to complete for the course. Those of you who have been at Weaver State for a while know that we've been uh, revising our Gen Ed program such that all Gen Ed courses, and this is one of them, uh, must have a uh, big question and a signature assignment. The big question for this course is, what is the relevance of critical thinking for my major discipline? And the signature assignment, as you will see, will be tied into that. Um, there will be more details here when I revise the Canvas page over the next couple of days. There will be four exams uh, administered during the semester. These will all be taken at the uh, WSU testing centers. I've given you a link here to the testing center page. Let's go ahead and click it. <coughs> You'll see on the testing center page that we have a number of testing centers uh, at the university. Some of these are on the main campus. Some of them are at some of the extension campuses, like Davis. Each of the um, tabs will list the hours for the testing center. It's your responsibility to make sure when the testing center is open. Okay. As I note down here at the bottom of the exam section, it's your responsibility to know when the testing centers are open. I will not give makeup exams for running out of time at the end of a testing day or for showing up after closing time on the final day of your exams. Now of course I make exceptions for emergencies, but those emergencies must be documented. You'll be allowed two full pages of notes, front and back, for a total of four sides, to take in with you for each of the exams. The testing centers collect and keep notes after you've finished your exam, so you might want to make an extra copy for yourself. If you're a distance student and live outside of the university's testing service area, that is outside of Weber, Davis, and Morgan counties here in Utah, then you can request to set up a proctor to administer your exam. You need to do this early in the semester instead of waiting, uh, rather than waiting until the last minute. Again, I've given you a link on where to do that. Uh, the exam dates, again, I'll be updating these shortly. These aren't quite accurate, but they're pretty close. And if there's an emergency situation that uh, prevents you from being able to take an exam at the scheduled time, please contact me as soon as possible to make alternate arrangements. Um, if you know ahead of time that you're going to miss an exam because of a vacation or a university athletic event or whatever, you can make arrangements with me uh, ahead of time to take the exam early. There are going to be 540 total points possible during the semester, as detailed above and in the assignments list. And your final grade will be based on this percentage scale. I'm going to be updating the important dates list. 
again, by the time that you log into Canvas, all this will be updated, so don't pay much attention to what appears here in the video. This is all out of date. Absence policy. Uh, if there are certain circumstances that will require you to miss a significant portion of the semester, please contact me as soon as reasonably possible. Policy regarding academic dishonesty. Um, cheating and plagiarism, plagiarism violate the student code. Uh, all of your exams must be completed on your own. You are welcome to work together on the quizzes. If you are found guilty of cheating or plagiarism, uh, then you're subject to failure for the specific assignment or, in more serious cases, failure of the entire course. Furthermore, as per the Policies and Procedures Manual of the University, I am required to submit the name of any violator to the Dean of Students Office. If you have any questions about the policy, please ask. Uh, the emergency closure statement is fairly straightforward. We don't have to cover that. And if you have um, uh, need for any accommodations or services due to a disability, uh, I'm happy to work with you. Uh, you'll need to go through the Services for Students with Disabilities office, which is room, in room 181 of the Student Services Center, or room 221 at the Davis campus. Uh, the office can arrange to provide course materials, including the syllable, I'm sorry, including the syllabus in alternative formats upon request. You can also contact them ex at extension 6413. I should note, by the way, that the video lectures for this course are closed captioned. They're all on YouTube. Um, if you like closed captioning, then make sure you turn on your closed caption feature on YouTube. If you find closed captioning distracting, then you can certainly turn off uh, those captions. All right, so let's take a quick look at the assignments list. All the assignments refer to the textbook. So you'll see that your assignments are broken down by week. So weeks one and two, um, you're going to be working through uh, the first chapter. In addition, you have notice that you have three quizzes due during this time. So the first quiz, <coughs> excuse me, will be due at the end of the first week, and the second and third quizzes will be due at the end of the second week. So what you should do then is to read the section of the text, watch the accompanying video lecture, post any questions that you have to the discussion page, uh, work through the exercise sets that I uh, have in the textbook, and check your answers against those that I provide. Then you should be prepared to complete the quiz. And then you can move on to the next assignment. So you've got three assignments to complete then during the first two weeks. Uh, weeks three and four, we're going to be working through chapter two. And then we're going to have the first exam on the first two chapters. We'll continue like that through the uh, semester. Weeks five through seven, uh, we're going to be working through uh, chapter three. Notice that you have three quizzes due during uh, or at different times during those weeks. And then we'll take exam two. Exam three will cover analogical arguments and causal reasoning. And then exam four will cover explanations and hypothetical, biconditional, and disjunctive syllogisms. Uh, exam four will be held during the final exam period. You'll notice that each of the exams will be uh, administered over the course of three days. Uh, so you should have plenty of time to uh, carve out of your schedule to take the exam. You'll notice also that I've given students the opportunity to take their exams on Sunday. Uh, the testing center in the library is open for limited hours on Sundays, and previous or students in previous semesters have asked that I make the exams available on those days. So you're welcome to take the exams then. So that pretty well covers this course. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me over the communication stream, or better yet, ask your question over the discussion pages. I'm sure there are other students in the class who would benefit from your questions. It's now time to turn to assignment one.